This video comes from an article I wrote for 5 out of 10 magazine a fair few years back now. The link's in the description if you're interested in procuring a copy. But yeah, I wanted to modify the original article a bit and play some games with actual real life joysticks for the first time since pretty much since I wrote this article in the middle of 2015. So all the footage you see here is of games I played with real joysticks having a bloody whale of a time with it. On to the topic. Joysticks died a quiet, prolonged death, yet nobody really seemed to notice, let alone mourn them. The only time they seemed to come up was in archaic phrases like waggling your joystick, which just made us all snort derisively at such outdated notions. They'd been a mainstay for decades, but no voice was loud enough to keep them around once the market forces had spoken. But suddenly, oh so quickly, the joystick returned triumphant, proud, as if it had never left us. And it reminded us just how transformative the simple act of grasping a stick can be to the experience of gaming. The life, death and rebirth of the joystick followed closely the whims of the market and the games that were being made, each intertwined with one another, influencing as much as it was influenced. But back on day one, it was just a thing that needed to be made, a manner of control that hadn't yet existed until Ralph Baer and Bill Harrison's TVG No. 2 prototype, aka the brown box, was pieced together in 1967. This nascent home gaming console, tweaked and modified to eventually become the Magnavox Odyssey in 1972, set the standard for the early days of gaming, and most, if not all, machines in those early days came with one or two sticks in the box. The second big step in the grand history of joysticks came with Sega's arcade release of Space Harrier in 1985, with the classic game being home to the first ever true analogue stick in gaming. They just made so much sense to people, to me. Why would anything else be needed to control a game? The NES pad was small and clunky, I much preferred the Powerplay Cruiser I used with our Amiga 500, an ugly green and pink thing with a stiff stick and clicky clacky yellow buttons it might have been, but it was mine. It was my tool. And like a carpenter with a favourite circular saw, I always turned to it, even when the technically superior stick my brother used was available. It was the pink and green menace I could never do without. To point that I actually bought one to replace my long gone childhood stick last year in 2022. But even back in the time of Space Harrier and the NES and everything else, there were hints and clues that we were moving into a post joystick world, despite my NES shaped reservations. The Mega Drive's pads were compatible with the Amiga, there was no reason not to use one if you had it, it controlled every game just fine, often better than any generic stick would. It let you use two individual button inputs on Mortal Kombat for God's sake. The tide had turned and was flowing in favour of the console's favourite, the stickless wonder, the joypad. Ergonomic design, the sort of thing you don't even realise you're holding. Two buttons, three buttons, six, eight more. They made a lot more sense for pulling off Street Fighter 2 special moves or making you able to pass, lob and shoot with a different input for each in football games. Joypads were right to replace sticks, but that doesn't mean they could offer the same experience. Efficiency doesn't always trump that experiential factor, that added something you're dragged in by. Far from being a bad thing for joysticks, the rise of the pad turned out to be a very good one. In a world no longer demanding you use a stick to control every game, manufacturers and developers were free to aim whatever they were making at a more niche, specialised audience. Where once the stick had been a catch-all controller, it was now becoming the big, chunky, transformative tool. While this new place in gaming meant no more waggling the stick to win a race in the aquatic games, that disappointment soon melted away. X-Wing, TIE Fighter, all the flight simulators in the world and many others soon came along, and hand in hand with the joystick they immersed me into these worlds like never before. Wing Commander became something I lived through, rather than a dispassionate series of on-screen events I jabbed and pressed buttons at. Descent left me discombobulated, but in an exciting way, in a way I never would have been able to experience through Joypad alone. Even the original PlayStation saw a proper flight stick released for it, both an acknowledgement of their power to draw a player in, as well as a sign of the transient times we were living in at that moment. But ultimately, 
the art of being transported by a joystick was relegated to the sidelines, made into a niche novelty for fighting game aficionados and flight sim nuts. We were reminded, every now and then with the likes of Steel Battalion, just how completely a joystick and its accoutrements could transform an experience. I remember speaking to Jim Boone, producer of Free Space 2, about why he thought the space sim genre had died a death. He put part of the blame squarely on the move from the joystick to other control methods, ones more suited to the quakes and half-lifes of the world. The simple fact was, fewer people had joysticks in the house, so games like Free Space 2 didn't sell as well as was hoped. Lower sales meant lesser interest from publishers, meaning even fewer joystick-specific titles were being made, meaning there was even less incentive for us, the players, to invest in a stick. This downward spiral saw the joystick niche become a rarity, and that rarity soon became something of a terminal illness. By the turn of the millennium, joysticks had all but died. It had been so drawn out of death and so seemingly inevitable that few even realised, even fewer mourned. We were all hopped up on the cool new thing, playing first-person shooters with this exciting new twin analog stick setup, or pointing a cursor at our enemies to make them die with a mouse and keyboard. We all kept playing, of course, soldiering on in a brave new world of 3D platformers and survival horror and endless yearly sports games. Sometimes I broke out my copy of X-Wing Alliance and, after a struggle with installing the damn thing, found myself met with a no joystick, no play message. Quick shrug and I moved on, back to other things I could play. Didn't even really matter to me, as even I had selective amnesia when it came to what joysticks could really actually do. It's not like these were even dark times. Plenty of games were released that left indelible marks on my mind. Beyond Good and Evil took me away to a beautiful, enrapturing world beyond our own. Bioshock bewildered and delighted with equal measure thanks in no small part to the atmosphere it created. Half-Life 2 raised the bar for all games. There was, to be perfectly honest, little reason to mourn the passing of the joystick. Then. Damn near suddenly, a 20-year-old personal pipe dream actually happened. Elite Dangerous came out. With it, almost inevitably, came the rebirth of the joystick. The rebirth of that big, chunky, vaguely embarrassing tool that utterly transports you to another world, or a few other worlds. Along with the return of the space exploration genre in general, thank you crowdfunding, the passion of the stick that has been bubbling under the surface for so many years has finally erupted once more. With Elite's arrival, I bought a stick for the first time since the Cytex Cyborg 3D purchase of 1999, which itself arrived just in time to make X-Wing Alliance an utter delight to play through. The new control staff, a Cytex Cyborg Evo, because being left-handed is an issue with joysticks, sat proudly on my desk for some time after. People would come round and genuinely laugh when they saw it. It was supremely nerdy in the best way to get yourself such a peripheral, and it was the sort of thing my friends and loved ones raised quizzical eyebrows at when they saw it in my room. But that didn't matter, because that new stick, just like its predecessor, guided me through the gateway to pure gaming joy. It let me truly grab onto imagination. It made me feel like I was part of the worlds I traveled through. And its return alongside a surprisingly popular title like Elite Dangerous, remember I wrote this in 2015, meant a host of younger players, those who were born and raised in a post-stick society, could finally see what all the fuss was about. Of course, you could play Elite Dangerous with a pad using a complex set of modifying button presses to access all relevant controls. You could even play the likes of Free Space 2 or some of the various X-Wing games with a mouse and keyboard should you want to pretend you're in a space-based FPS. But to do so would be to miss out on the truly transformative effect a big quality joystick can have on your gaming life. When I was delivering my cargo of precious metals to a tiny outpost in an uncharted system of Elite Dangerous, the feel of the joystick in my hand, the physical act of throttling up, flicking the hat switch to reroute power systems, I was there. Even ignoring the fact it was genuinely a better way to play the game from a mechanical standpoint, the immersion, the feel of being inside the universe on your screen brought a level of, well, joy that no other input method could. Think about that. 
it's an input method. It's a way of the computer registering the commands you as a player want the machine to carry out on screen. It's the most basic element of changing something from non-interactive to interactive, present in every game in some way, and an element taken for granted to such a degree that it's often completely ignored. I, like many others, forgot about the joystick. But I was beyond happy it made a comeback. Even if I did miss the boat with its follow-up rebirth when Microsoft Flight Simulator hit in 2020. Thanks for watching, or maybe reading, if you did that too. 5 out of 10 couldn't have existed without its patrons on Patreon, and neither could I. This may be a slight exaggeration, but you, you get the point. I'm off to waggle my stick and make other related knob gags. Bye!